Imagine a sunny afternoon with a curious little child named Alex, wandering in a vibrant park filled with chirping birds, fluttering butterflies and rustling leaves. The park is a wonderland, a kaleidoscope of life and energy. Alex is a keen observer, his eyes wide with curiosity as he explores this bustling world around him. He spots a bird dipping its beak into a puddle, quenching its thirst. He watches a worm wriggling its way through the nutrient-rich soil, its home. He gazes at a tree swaying gently in the breeze, its leaves rustling. The world is alive with movement, each creature and plant in the park busy with its own little life. In this vibrant environment, Alex also notices things that don't move or breathe like the park bench or the pebbles on the path. They seem different, they don't drink water or sway in the wind. Alex begins to wonder what do all these living things need to survive, and how are they different from non-living things? Alex started to think, what do all living things need to stay alive? Well, let's start with the basics. Every living thing, from the tiniest ant to the tallest giraffe, needs certain things to survive. Just like all of you, they need air to breathe. Imagine a bird soaring high in the sky. It flaps its wings, glides through the air, and takes deep breaths of the fresh air around it. Without air, it wouldn't be able to fly or even stay alive. Next, think about a fish swimming in a pond. It's not just swimming for fun, you know. The fish is actually living in water, and it needs water to breathe and move around. So water is another crucial need for living things. Then, there's food. All living things need food for energy. Picture a squirrel scrambling up and down trees, gathering nuts for its meal. It needs that food to have the energy to scamper around and do squirrel things. Now let's talk about heat. Have you ever noticed how plants seem to turn towards the sun? That's because they need the sun's heat to grow. Without it, they simply can't survive. But it's not just about having air, water, food and heat. Living things also need a place to live, a shelter. Think about a bird again. It doesn't just fly around all day. It has a nest, a safe place to rest, sleep and raise its little ones. Lastly, every living thing needs space. Just like you need room to run and play, living things also need space to grow and thrive. Think about a tree. If it's too close to other trees, it won't get enough sunlight or room to grow. So, all living things need air, water, food, heat, shelter, and space to survive. But what makes them different from non-living things? Alex then thought, what makes my pet dog different from my toy car? Well, Alex, living things like your pet dog, the trees outside, and even us humans have special characteristics that help us meet our basic needs. Let's take a little journey into the world of living things. Imagine a bird. It has wings that allow it to fly, find food, and escape from danger. Its beak helps it to pick up food, and its feathers keep it warm. All these physical characteristics help the bird meet its basic needs. Now, consider a tree. Its roots help it to absorb water and nutrients from the soil, while its leaves capture sunlight to make food. Its bark protects it from harsh weather and animals. Just like the bird, the tree's physical characteristics help it meet its basic needs. And what about us, humans? We have hands to manipulate objects, eyes to see, ears to hear, a nose to smell, and a mouth to eat. These are our sensory organs, and they help us interact with and understand the world around us. Our legs help us move from place to place, and our skin protects us from the elements. Our bodies are like well-oiled machines with each part playing a crucial role. Take our heart, for example. It beats non-stop, pumping blood around our body to deliver oxygen and nutrients to our cells. Or our lungs, which allow us to breathe in oxygen and breathe out carbon dioxide. Living things are not just bags of water, they are complex systems with parts that work together to ensure survival. And these parts, whether they're wings on a bird, roots on a tree, or lungs in a human, all serve to meet the basic needs of living things. Air, water, food, heat, shelter, and space. Living things have special characteristics and body parts that help them meet their needs. But what about the environment they live in? Alex pondered, why do the birds in the park seem happier than the ones in the city? Well, Alex, the answer lies in the environment they live in. A healthy environment is like a perfect home for living things. It provides clean air to breathe, fresh water to drink, and nutritious food to eat. Imagine waking up to a breath of fresh, clean air, sipping on crystal clear water, and munching on a delicious, nutrient-filled breakfast. Sounds wonderful, doesn't it? That's exactly how living things feel in a healthy environment. 
But it's not just about the air, water and food. A healthy environment also gives living things the space they need to grow and move around freely. It's like having a big playground all to yourself. Now let's take a moment to appreciate how living things help each other out. It's like a big happy family where everyone chips in. Plants produce oxygen that animals, including us humans, need to breathe. In return, animals help plants by spreading their seeds and helping them grow. It's a beautiful cycle of give and take, showing that we are all interconnected in this big, beautiful world. So, you see Alex, the birds in the park are happier because they live in a healthier environment. They have everything they need to not just survive, but to thrive. A healthy environment is crucial for all living things to survive and thrive. So remember the basic needs of living things. They need air, water, food, heat, shelter, and space. And remember how living things help each other too. They do it by sharing resources and supporting each other's growth. Remember, just like Alex, always stay curious and keep exploring the world around you.